All right, well, welcome. Good to see you here, if those of you who are here in person, and for those of you who are online, we welcome you as well. We're so glad to welcome you to this time of worship. My name is Lori Lassie. I'm the lead pastor here, and it's a privilege to gather together and to gather online as we come before an amazing God. So welcome to all of you. We are going to start with uh, this one-minute video that we have been starting with. It reminds us of how this in-person worship works. So let's take a look. Welcome back to worship. Here are some things you need to know. Please practice social distancing and avoid gathering in groups inside the building. Face masks are required. We know that when we wear face masks, we protect those around us. The praise band will sing. No congregational singing, please. Our goal is to have a worship service that is shorter than usual, about 40 to 45 minutes. Joys and concerns will be shared from those submitted earlier this week. As we go forward, if you have a joy or concern that you'd like to share on Sunday, please submit that request through our website, stillwaterschurch.com. Children, please stay with your family. We will have a kid's time toward the end of the service, but please remain with your family during that time. Ushers will escort you out starting from the back row. Please drop your offering and connection card in the basket that you'll find by the sanctuary doors on the way out. Thanks so much for coming, and now let us worship. And just a couple of uh, other things, little announcements here as we get started. <clears throat> First of all, Feeding America is this week. And so if you would like to help distribute food, we're going to have pallets of food again distributed or delivered here in the parking lot on Wednesday morning, uh, bright and early. And so if you'd like to participate in uh, distributing those foods, people will come in with their cars. We just hand them to the people who come in uh, in their cars. Uh, we would love to have uh, help with that. So uh, please get on our website, stillwaterschurch.com, and sign up to help with that. Uh, once again, welcome, and uh, for those of you, if it is your first time here, we want to extend a very special welcome to you. We're so glad to have you join us, whether again online or in person. We welcome you. We're super excited that you're worshiping with us, and it is always our hope and our prayer that whatever you are facing, whatever is happening in your life, the struggles, the hurts, the, uh, the pains, uh, whatever it is, the joys, the celebrations, that as we come together on this day, we can bring it all with us and know that God already knows and he wants to meet you right exactly where you are. And so we welcome each one of you to worship. Our band is going to lead us and they are going to sing as we'll sing from our hearts, uh, here I am to worship.
Thank you, band. That's awesome. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, wanted to let you know that we have one more exciting uh, announcement thing to share. Uh, Derek Schill of our congregation, he is one of our youth, he has been working his way through the scouting program, and he is now to the point of embarking on his Eagle Scout project. And he has presented his project to our board of trustees. They have approved it. And so now he would like to share with you, this is going to be a project that actually happens in, our, in the backyard of our church. And so um, he would like to present to you uh, this project so that you are aware of it. And so let's run this video of Derek. Hi, my name is Derek Show. My family and I are members of Stillwater's Church. I am currently a Life Scout in the Scouting Program. I have earned all the necessary air badges to advance to Eagle Scout status. The last step in my journey is to complete my Eagle Project. I worked with the church and decided to build a fire pit and benches for an additional space outside for fellowship gatherings. I will also build a firewood holder the following steps are what I need to complete this process. I need to raise funds for the project estimated at 2500 I need to purchase all the materials for the project. And then I need to organize two days that we can complete the work. Would you please consider making a monetary donation or a donation of your time and skills to help make this project a reality? Thank you for con your consideration. All right, so um, we're very proud of Derek and for the work that he is doing on this. Uh, you heard the $2,500, and uh, please know he's also going outside of Stillwaters to raise funds, so we don't have to supply all of that, but wouldn't it be wonderful to support him generously as he embarks on his Eagle Scout project, which will greatly benefit this church. I know the youth pretty much every Sunday night, unless it's raining, are using the fire pit that we currently have, and so uh, it'll be a wonderful addition to our church. So we're proud of you, Derek, and we're excited for you. And uh, so um, <clears throat> now wanted to shift gears uh, to our prayer time. And as uh, you heard in the opening video that gives our instructions that we have prayer requests that have come in and um, wanted to share those that have come in already. I feel, feel like my, my microphone is just a little bit in and out again. Um, so um, Two very serious, uh, actually, prayer requests have come in. The first one is, uh, many of you may be aware of or know our members, Bruce and Shelly Ellis. Uh, they were in a very serious motorcycle accident earlier this week, and they did ask that we share it with all of you so that we can all be lifting them up in prayer. Uh, they were in South Dakota, and they were going down the highway, so at a very fast pace, and were sideswiped. Um, so Bruce has two broken ankles, broken ribs, broken nose among his in injuries. Shelly has a collapsed lung, broken shoulder, broken finger, um, both with cuts and abrasions. And as I said, they are in South Dakota, possibly looking to be transported here. And uh, they were, again, very appreciative. I spoke with Bruce uh, this week, and he very much appreciates your prayers with them during this time. This is obviously something that they had not planned on, and it's, uh, it's uh, going to be a long road now. Also, uh, Glary Klausing is our music director. He's actually out of town today, but he did submit a prayer request. And some of you, I don't know if you have ever been here when his friend Stacy has sung with us, but she has sung a few times. Stacy found out recently that her husband, Tom, has been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. And so again, um, prayers for them on this journey that they had also not planned on. And uh, so we're going to lift them up and uh, all of the other things that are weighing on our hearts, we're going to go to God in prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you and we just recognize that in many ways, life is fragile. And it's such a gift. And so we do pray for Bruce and Shelley. 
Pray for Stacy and her husband, Tom. All of these on this journey that they had not planned on, did not hope for. And God, we thank you for your abiding presence, for your healing touch, for your strength, and for the hope that you give us no matter where we are in life and what is happening. And God, we pray for all of those things that weigh on each of our hearts. We all have those struggles. We have those hurts. We have our angers. We have our fears. And we're grateful that you know all about them and you surround us with your grace and your glory and your strength and your wisdom. So those things that are just hurting us right now, we lay them before you, before the foot of the cross. God, we also take a moment and just thank you for the gift of this day, the gift of each life, for the hope that is always before us if we just lift our eyes to see it, for your grace and mercy that never goes away. God, we just ask that you continue to lead us as your church. We continue our vision and our mission of finding the lost. Just show us how releasing the captive, those held in so many different ways, held captive by addictions and fears and hurts and struggles. And help us to learn how to develop as disciples, to center our hearts on you, to grow in seeing the world through your eyes. So God, as we enter into this time of worship and continue in this time, God, make space in our hearts for the movement of your glorious spirit. We thank you for your vision for each of our lives and for your church as a whole. Give us the strength and the courage to be who you need us to be to take us to those places where you need us. God, we love you, and we praise you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, at this time, um, I will say that uh, I'm kind of excited. Pastor Bridge is going to bring our message today. And so uh, I've had uh, several days off this week and have appreciated that. She's been preparing a message all week. We are continuing our series on the Beatitudes. This is the section of chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew, where each line starts with the word blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are meek. Beatitudes literally mean supreme blessedness. And uh, she is, uh, Pastor Bridget today is going to talk about uh, the one, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And she also found a video that we're going to show now, and it is uh, the video called The Beatitudes for a Global Pandemic. So let's take a look. Blessed are those who stay indoors, for they have protected others. Blessed are the unemployed and the self-employed, for their need of God is great. Blessed are the corner shopkeepers, for they are the purveyors of scarce things. Blessed are the delivery drivers and the postal workers, for they are the bringers of essential things. Blessed are the hospital workers, the ambulance crews, the doctors, the nurses, the care assistants and the cleaners. For they stand between us and the grave, and the kingdom of heaven is surely theirs. Blessed are the checkout workers, for they have patience and fortitude in the face of overwork and frustration. Blessed are the refuse collectors, 
for they will see God despite the mountains of waste. Blessed are the teachers, for they remain steadfast and constant in disturbing times. Blessed are the church workers, the deacons, priests and bishops, for they are a comforting presence in a hurting world as they continue to signpost towards God. Blessed are the single parents, for they are coping alone with their responsibilities and there is no respite. Blessed are those who are alone, for they are children of God and with him they will never be lonely. Blessed are the bereaved, for whom the worst has already happened. They shall be comforted. Blessed are those who are isolated with their abusers. For one day, we pray, they will know safety. Blessed are all during this time who have pure hearts, all who still hunger and thirst for justice, all who work for peace and who model mercy. May you know comfort, may you know calm, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Okay, good morning, church. It is great to be with you guys this morning here in person and also all of you joining us online. And I hope this message this morning finds you well, blessed, feeling hopeful, and not fearful. This morning we are going to be talking about hunger. We are going to talk about physical hunger and also spiritual hunger. And if you're like me, you've been sticking pretty close to home and only, only going out when necessary. Or perhaps maybe you've even had some conversations with um, friends, family, maybe even your neighbors um, who have their jobs, either they've been furloughed, maybe they've lost their jobs, and maybe they've lost all of their income. So I've been having the privilege, along with many volunteers, of helping distribute food to Washington County with our partnership with Feeding America. We have heard from so many that have come through there that are so thankful. You could ask any of the volunteers and they could share you so many stories. But one in particular is one that um, a gal who had come through the mobile pantry, when she got home and unpacked her box, she found these beautiful strawberries. And so she sought us out on Facebook and messaged us there and said she was overjoyed and so were her kids because strawberries had become kind of a luxury item in their home and they all loved them. So they were just so thankful for these strawberries. So I am seeing both things that are lacking, but I'm also seeing abundance. I'm seeing people rise up and it's both scary and beautiful and I think unique in the opportunity we have to see some things and possibly experience some things and maybe even learn some things that we've never learned quite in this way before. So that's what God's been driving home with me these past couple of weeks as I've been working on this message for this morning. The thought of the word hunger. And what can we learn about physical hunger and about spiritual hunger now during this time that we might not see as clearly some other time and if there are things that we are shaped by now, who could we be after this passes? What will the Christian look like as it arises from its restricted state that it's currently in? And so I have three short scriptures that I wanted to share with you talking about physical hunger and talking about spiritual hunger. And I want us to think, myself included, what is it that we can learn from this? How will God shape and mold us and what might he do in the world in a great way, a positive way, as a result of having gone through this struggle together? So when it comes to the physical food and the physical hunger, I think that it's a simple answer. It's short, it's sweet, and it's found in 1 John chapter 3, starting with verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. 
and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know the love of God dwells, dwells within us. So the short answer to what can we learn about this physical hunger is that for us as Christians is that we're not supposed to let anyone go hungry. If we know of people who are hungry physically, we're supposed to meet that need. And right now, with people out of work, you may know a single parent who works maybe two part-time jobs and both of those jobs have gone away. It's our responsibility to help meet that need because if we have material possessions and see someone in need but don't meet that need, how can the love of Christ be in us? Now, this sounds kind of scary, but maybe we take some money out of our savings account and um, maybe we take part of our grocery money to give it away. Give a gift card, drop a bag of food on someone's doorstep, give to organizations like Feeding America who are helping to feed the hungry. That's what Christians are supposed to, do, to be doing right now, Meet, meeting the needs, the physical needs. And it's that simple. That's our mission. Christians are supposed to rise up. This is what we do, so let's do it. But the lesson, think about what it could look like after this whole coronavirus thing has its life cycle. No matter how short or how long it is, what would it look like like if Christians always acted this way? What if we, as Christians, did, didn't allow anyone we know in our community to go hungry? What if more money was spent in the future feeding the hungry and providing resources for them to sustain feeding themselves in the future? What if that's a lesson we learn about what it means to have the love of Christ? What will we experience now that we can carry forward? So I think the hunger thing is just simple. You may not be able to have someone over to your home right now, but after this passes and we can continue life and whatever it looks like, who will you share your food with? Who needs food? Who needs those gift cards? Who needs to come and just join you for a meal at your home with food you've already prepared? It's probably gonna sit in the fridge as leftovers and maybe in a week be thrown out. Who can we give food to? So please, let's not miss this opportunity to learn and be changed, indelibly impacted with this lesson, lesson for later, now, and forever. The second part of it, though, is we are not just physical beings, right? The body comes and goes. They live, they die. We're going to go home to be with the Lord. So we don't have to live a life in fear of death. We never know when it's coming anyway, so let's live a life with hope. So physical comes and goes, but the more important is the spiritual. And so it made me think of Isaiah. I just want to read a couple of verses from Isaiah 55, starting with verse 1. God says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. Why spend money on that which is not bread and your labor on that which does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me, God says, and eat what is good and our soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I think God, God rightly so should be asking the Christian church around the world, why are you spending your money and your time by eating things that don't actually satisfy? Why are you settling for substitutes of a relationship with God instead of just a relationship with God? What if we studied our Bibles not just in Bible studies? What if we lived out worship-filled lives in addition to going to worship? A lot of times we settle for spiritual substitutes but they are not actually the real thing. So the danger is we might keep ourselves sort of non-hungry for our entire lives. And then we see God face to face, and he's like, well, you went to a lot of group meetings and small groups, 
that's good. You tried not to do bad things, and that's good. But what about me? What about you? And what about your soul? What about just kneeling before me and saying, please forgive me for all my sins? What about that? So think about the, this right now. Some of the things have been removed from us. COVID-19 has drastically changed our Sunday morning worship and all of our church programs. Let's just ask ourselves, now left on our own in our own homes, are we singing? Are we worshiping? Are we praying? Are we on our knees confessing? Are we sharing? Are we reading our Bibles? Are we on the phone connecting with others on a spiritual dialogue and a conversation? Because if we aren't doing any of those things, then we gotta be careful because we might just be attending events where other people are doing those things and we are just along for the ride. This is a chance for us to see what our hunger for God really looks like. What have we been hungry for? What, have we, what if we've been hungry for the first thing which is just a connection with God and talking with him through his Holy Spirit because Jesus opens the curtain. What about that? What if a hunger in us grows for real worship? What if a hunger in us grows for real fellowship? Not just, I see you every Sunday, and so it reminds me that I am part of a church, and we talk, how are you doing? How's your job? Hey, I'll pray for you. What if we really want to be known because right now we feel alone? What if we really want koinonia and not just Sunday morning worship or Sunday morning socializing? The early church often used the term koinonia to describe the idealized state of fellowship, prayer, and service. What if that hunger in us grows to really dig into the word, to really sing with reckless abandon? I think that's a good thing. I think that's the kind of hunger that we should be fostering, that we should be fanning until it's a flame. Because imagine if we learn the lesson now for the things that actually satisfy, and if we grow close to God now, what will church services look like on Sunday morning when it's filled, packed to the brim with people that are excited to be there and to worship? What if we joined people in this building, or it could be any building, and we're like, ah, welcome everybody. This is the moment we've been waiting for. When's the last time you said that on a Sunday morning? This is the moment we've been waiting for. God says we don't have to pay for this. It's free, but we gotta seek after it. What if being restricted from proximity from each other is the best thing that ever happened to our faith? the most powerful thing that ever happened to our worship, when we pri reprioritize as we gather together again. I think it could be awesome. So I don't want us to miss the chance to learn. During the season of restriction, of sickness, of fear, these, there are things that we might be able to see now and exper experientially learn that transform the kingdom and our impact in the world afterwards. And so it brings me to the third passage I want to read. This is Jesus, and this is a promise. It's one of the Beatitudes that we have been discussing in our sermon series. It's Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. To be right with God and to be filled with God's righteousness through Christ, to live rightly, to love righteous things, to connect with a righteous God, to live as righteous people, to be given by grace undeservedly. Righteousness that we can pour out on the world around us. The promise is they will be filled, those that have that hunger. And so, I think God uses all things for the good, right? He works all things together for good. So this is a, not a good time that is happening to our wor world right now. It's a dangerous time. It's an unknown time, but God can even use this for good. 
if we'll have eyes to see and ears to hear and minds to absorb what it is that he might be saying to his church. And I think it could be a profound impact that we have on the world. So quite simply, I just ask each of us as believers of God, as followers of Jesus, for the physical side of things, don't let anyone go hungry. Just don't do it. Don't let it happen on your watch. And you and I don't have to single-handedly be responsible for everyone, but we, all, but we all have to do something because collectively we got it covered. God will provide seed to the sower. So don't let people go hungry who need food, but spiritually, I say, fan into flame that hunger. Get as hungry as you can and fuel that hunger. Drive it, motivate it, even pray for that hunger. And it will sort of, um, like everybody's getting antsy and with this beautiful, joyful righteousness and desire, and then, and, and then at some point we will be free to walk without masks, free to gather, free to give hand, hugs and handshakes, free to sing at the top of our lungs, free to gather together to share a meal, and it will be like loosing all these Christians on the world. I want the world to see God's love then. So let's live it out now in hope. Let's learn what we can learn. Right now, let's be wise but not worried. And let's see what God can do with this, with his church, how he transforms us, how he even makes something like this work out for good, but not just for his people, but through his people for the entire world. May God bless you during this season of hunger. Amen. And now I invite Lori, Pastor Lori up, right? For prayer? Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Gracious God. God, again, we... We know that our lives have been so changed, so impacted. And God, each one of us, our lives have been changed and impacted in different ways. Sometimes we lose sight of the blessings that are right in front of us. God, for those who are struggling with physical hunger, bring us to the places where we can meet that need. God, we just ask that you, um, that you guide us, that even in a pandemic, we can supply the needs of those who are hurting. God, help each one of us to hunger and thirst in our souls for you. God, we just ask that you, um, that you lead us, that as we go about our week, that we continue our lives in a worshipful way, aware of your presence, taking hold of your hand that leads us resting in your presence and gathering strength from your spirit. And so God, not only do we ask that you settle your spirit on us here and now, but as we go and as we adjust to new ways of living in our homes, ways of being and going that we are not able to do right now. God, I know that so many of us are struggling with different aspects of sadness and um, just weariness. And so God, fill us up. We hunger for you. We hunger for your life-giving food for our souls. So be with us and guide us. 
And we pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, I invite Jessica forward, our Director of Children's Ministry. She's going to share with us a children's time. Have a, I had my hands full walking up here, and uh, the reason was I wanted to share a few things that um, when this pandemic first started, March, April, this past spring, uh, schools were closed. And as a mother of two little girls, and, and I know we have a few children in here and listening in, uh, many were faced with, oh boy, what does this mean? And for, I mean, we're still kind of in the midst of all of these feelings and all these thoughts and all these decisions. Well, one of the first things was, was that uh, looking at the kids, I realized I was in charge of lunches. Uh, you know, when you send the kids to school, they have lunchtime, you know that they're getting fed. And so I was like, well, now that my kitchen is gonna be a cafeteria, I went and bought some of these trays. And the reason was twofold. I was gonna make my kitchen a cafeteria, but then also to making sure I had the food groups and, and that they were fed. But then immediately, I was like, wow, the schools are not feeding the children. And so you have to then think about, well, what about the kids who doesn't have these trays at home and, and those that might be a little bit more on the hungry side? And so kids, uh, think about that. So at lunchtime, maybe you would exchange food. I know you can get cre pretty creative uh, with that want to say, oh, I don't like this. What do you have? Let's change, let's exchange. But maybe the creativity now is, how do I share my lunch with a friend, with someone else uh, during this time? Because it's not that you're sitting necessarily across the table but how do you share your food with others to share uh, who might be a little bit more physically hungry? And then the second thing I went and, and um, did was, uh, so I brought a smaller version, actually we used a big poster board, uh, was created a schedule. So here I have 7 a.m. to about 8 p.m. And again, school's out, so you, what do we do? We, we start writing, okay, at eight o'clock, it's reading, right? At nine o'clock, I'm actually physically writing, it's math time, uh, then there's recess, and then there's lunch, right? All of these things, because now our, our homes turned into classrooms. But what was missing is it wasn't just the classrooms at our, our schools that had closed, right? Here, we, we had to close our doors as well. And so when writing these schedules, it is important, and especially as we go into this fall, because guess what? This fall, we're gonna be doing this again. And I know it's constantly changing what this fall looks like, but it's extremely important that when we're writing out this schedule, that we have our faith, that we are scheduling time for worship, for prayer, for fellowship, uh, so some of the things that Pastor Bridget had shared, we can do at home too. It's not just something we do here, it is something that we do at home. And so as we are thinking of our hunger, uh, it actually really randomly, chicken soup for the soul, is just, you know, that's what's going on here is, is how do we, we feed our soul and are we carving out time to do it when we are working on our schedules? And so kids, again, think about how can you share your lunch with other kids and two, when you're writing out your new school days, and again, it's all gonna look different day by day, week by week, but making sure that there's time on your calendar for, for God. So that said, uh, I know it's daunting tasks, but it's, it's something that's really good to do, and I encourage you to think about that as we go into, into the fall. That said, band, closing prayer, closing song. Have at it. <laughs> Mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and pray. 
its breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from the this time I invite you to go into the world and let us feed those who are hungry physically and let us hunger and thirst for righteousness that we might see through the eyes of God more and more each day that we might um, that our hearts might break for what God's heart breaks for and that our hearts might be filled with his amazing Holy Spirit. So go in peace. Reminder, the ushers will dismiss you row by row, so if you could be ready for that and just hold on for a second. And then also there are uh, places for you as you leave the sanctuary to put both your connection card as well as your offerings. So if you could do that, I will be outside. And if you'd like to stay and socially distance chat, we'd love, I'd love to, to talk with you. Go in peace. Amen. of King.